and welcome to the Kicks and Crotch podcast. So uh, these videos that are going up at the moment are much older videos from a different YouTube channel I have where we have split the podcasts apart. And so this is a brand new channel, but I'm putting up the other material, the older stuff that's been up for a while, just because I think it's right, it should live on this channel. And so it's all going to be going up. So you'll be seeing much different quality in audio and in um video as well on these uh, podcasts so i do apologize for that uh, but as you see it progressing you'll see things developing and the quality going up and the guests changing in and out uh, this is dedicated to uh, martial arts and to self-defense so the older material is going up at the moment as i say from the old channel but as that starts to change as we run out of that material or there's a big event happening such as deji versus Floyd Mayweather, the new stuff will go up as well. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this, even though it is an older quality and is back from when this podcast was actually part of a student group, but I hope you enjoy. So today we're going to be talking about the idea of traditional martial arts and how we use them in the kind of the modern era. Are they used in um, a, an appropriate way? Do we need to change them up? Are they um, far more about the traditions rather than the martial art and the, the fighting styles of them? Um, and we're just gonna go from there. I'm joined again by um, Tom Davey. So um, basically, just a, not even a CV, but uh, just to quickly kind of say why me and Tom might do this. Um, I'll just do a quick thing about me and then I'll let Tom explain about himself. Um, but before all that, just so you know, as I say every single time, um, these opinions and everything we're going to say now are our own. They are mine and Tom's opinions at this point. Our opinions may change. They may have been different in the past. That is being human. They may um, change again tomorrow. Uh, they are completely ours. They do not represent the society. They do not represent the student union or the university. And indeed, they do not represent any of the associations or memberships that me and uh, Tom hold in any way. Um, now that's out of the way. So, um, as I say, I'm Adam Parsons. I'm the president of the Self-Defense and Wellbeing Society. I'm also the instructor of the society. Um, in terms of traditional martial arts, which we're going to talk about and how they brought into modern day, um, my first martial art uh, was judo. And um, I was brought up in that from a very young age, a very traditional way of teaching uh, Ju uh, judo it wasn't a modern club it was a very traditional kind of Japanese heritage one and on from that I've also been brought into the kind of the modern ideas as well since I've got older into the ideas of self-defense and everything like that so I do have that crossover so I'll just pass over to Tom so he can explain kind of his roots in traditional uh, martial arts as well so Tom yeah, fine. yeah um, I primarily teach Aikido and have been for the last oh, god knows how long uh, uh, I think similar introduction when I was young, my nan was a judo instructor at one point, so I kind of got thrown into that bit. Uh, with the, if someone picks on you at school, do this, sort of like standard sacrifice throws and stuff. Um, went to a traditional style taekwondo stroke tech kyun combination club that was interesting. Uh, but yeah, done mostly judo, jiu-jitsu based, aikido obviously, a few weapon styles on and off over the years, a bit of kung fu, tai chi, bit of everything really. <laughs> Yeah, but same as me, it, it becomes patchwork, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, kind of jump straight into it. So with the idea of traditional, I mean, uh, you know yourself, because you recognised it when I first stepped in your dojo, I come from a very um, traditional way. It was, it's battered into you um, that the tradition is part of what you do. Um, now, I have seen a lot of uh, traditional martial arts that are taught in a modern way that don't have that tradition to them anymore. They've, it's not, it's not quite the same. It doesn't have that cultural um, addition that I think in the past we we kind of added, especially in Japanese martial arts, we added the 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 culture of of uh, Japanese background and the respect that they show in in more Eastern countries. That seems to have been taken away uh, since it's been more Westernized. Um, certainly not something I I can't help it. I just automatically do it because that's what was. No. pushed into me when I was four until I was 16, 17 when I um, left judo, uh, not including all the other traditional stuff I've done. So it, it's very difficult. And I don't know, do you feel that that's a, a bad thing that we've just kind of in the West taken it over completely? Or is it something that actually, because of 
other practices of the way that um, myself and you were trained that maybe, although I'm, I'm guessing your nan was nicer to you than some of my instructors. Um, but <laughs> um, but uh, is that um, a, a good thing? Do we need to move away from that? Um, I think it really depends what you're looking to get out of the martial art that you're choosing to train in. I mean, if you a uh, classic example, if you're looking for a combative sport like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, MMA, any of the other combined ones, then you're not really looking for the cultural side of the traditions of the martial art in that you're just looking for a combat sport, a way to get fit, a way to, yeah. you know, train up for competitions and stuff like that. I mean, obviously some martial arts, traditional martial arts still offer those as well, but they come with the cultural side of it normally still attached. Classic ones being most stars of karate be a classic obvious choices for that um you still have all the you know the bow or the ray when you come in and offer them out at the start of the matches and everything so you still have the whole etiquette side of it in yeah but then some depend again it depends entirely on what you want to train i'd say and if you're not looking for you know a bit of the culture the bit of background traditions of martial arts then yeah you go and train somebody you're not going to get that i mean yes i mean i kind of I don't go full whole hog on the tradi uh, traditional stuff to a degree. I do in my own club at uh, UKC. I do, we do the standard one of, we do the red at the beginning, at the end of the session, and in between, we have a bit of a laugh. I'm not, I don't, as I've said before, I don't care if you call me sensei. I, it just means teacher. I, I don't care. Just stick your hand up, wave at me in my general direction and go, help. I'll come and help. <laughs> you know, I'm, yeah. not walking around, I'm not walking around with a, a bocken in my hand going, you fuck that up, and then hitting you in the back of the leg with it. That's, you know, going a bit too far. <laughs> yeah, the, the big stick idea. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I think it for me, it depends when it's me teaching and especially because I specialize more in, in self-defense, which doesn't yeah. really have that background. Um, then I like, do not ever call me by my title. That's, that's not happening. But I think it, for me, it's when I step into somebody else's dojo, it's, it's not even intentional. Like I say, I mean, like I said at the beginning, when I um, came into Dojo in, in Dover, I gave myself away without actually trying to. <laughs> I, I, I came in and the idea of, right, you know, you're starting, you're starting from scratch, you don't want to, you know, and immediately just the way I, I, I walked. Stuck on the map. <laughs> yeah, everything gave it away immediately because it's muscle memory. You're, you're taught, no, yep. this is how you do it. And especially because of when I started training was when I was four. So I started doing it the same time as I started at school. So it's the way that I step onto a mat is almost the same as you put a hand up in class. It's like the same kind of motion mm -hmm. for me. Um, so it gets, it gets ingrained, but I don't know for, for me, I think again, it does depend, but I don't know in my, in my mind, if you're, if you're doing martial arts, I kind of want some of that tradition. Um, but then again, yeah. as you say, it depends on the martial art. Like if you're doing a, uh, if you're doing a Japanese um, or, or Chinese, martial art then you you do have that uh, yeah. like a long long history of um culture that goes with it um i mean i think th the biggest one i'm thinking of that isn't it's still very old but not as old as say some of the japanese ones that i think it'd be incredibly disrespectful to try and use without the cultural stuff would be something like capoeira oh yeah because uh, of course capoeira any, any of those or exists yeah, like any of the because of stuff it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it literally exists because the Portuguese didn't want them fighting and it, it, it's ingrained into a culture. Um, mm. But then you still have some people who would do capoeira because we do capoeira at Christchurch, although there's, there's very few. And they there used to be one at UKC. UKC. Yeah. I think they might, I don't know if they're still going or not. There used to be because one of my students was one of the people who found us. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, I, I, yeah, I remember at UKC, there used to be a guy that used to play football. Um, doing capoeira is the weirdest thing to watch. Um, but with, with things like that, you do get some of the just go, oh yeah, but I just want to learn to kick really well. It's like, that's missing everything that comes with it to me. Um, yeah. Like if you come to a self-defense class, okay, you want to learn how to get out of this or, or whatever. But I don't know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very Western idea to just be like, I want to learn how to do this. This is all I want to know. Yeah. I saw this on a film. This is what I want to do. I mean, it'd be like someone, um, someone going to Scott Adkins, because I've been talking about this film, because so uh, next week's podcast after this for um, Kicks the Crotch is um, me and the rest of the committee are doing a film review on Debt Collector. Um, okay. 
So, and then we're going to, and then a few weeks later, we're going to do the second one. So I've been looking at Scott Adkins stuff. Right. I might, and... I might have to uh, watch that or listen to it and check it out because uh, I know people who worked on that. <laughs> oh, well, hey, yeah, me just slating the stunt work. Um, but uh, it, there's, um, there's, yeah, with, with, with stuff that like that, can you imagine just someone going to say Scott Adkins and, and with, say the Undisputed films to go, well, I want to know the, how to do the Boyka kick. Okay. In that case, do you want to come to 20 years of gym, tw- <laughs> um, gymnastics, yeah. uh, 20, 30 years of karate, as well as, you know, do that, then yeah. come back to it. I mean, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be a case of just going, well, I want to learn this kick because it looks cool. No, you, you do everything that comes with it. And I think that's why I, I think any martial arts school, any self-defense school have a lot of drop off um, from like the first few yeah. weeks, especially at university schools university oh, clubs because it's like oh yeah, yeah yeah this looks really cool yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna be jason Bourne. turn up oh shit we've got to put work in oh no 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 it's the same as like sounds like effort diets. yeah it's like people going <laughs> diets why am i not a size zero already because you're staying in bed all day eating chocolate yeah but i want to be a size zero it's the same problem to me i don't know i'm i'm, I'm probably just being a cynical old man but to me <laughs> uh to me it's just I think it's so ingrained because I was brought up with it for so long and it literally was part of my, it's almost part of my upbringing um, with, with the Japanese stuff that um, specifically Japanese I've done. I mean, I've, I've done one, some other cultures and I've done, you know, from Chinese backgrounds or Korean, uh, Israeli, everything else. But I did the, the Japanese for so long that it's just ingrained. Um, And it's, it's weird because, of course, they, they also cross that over between the martial arts because it's a cultural thing and not necessarily a martial arts cultural thing. So what I mean is if you did um, a martial art in America, uh, what the hell is the name of it? I can't remember now. There is a specifically American martial art. It's, it's from Hawaii. Ah, they call oh, themselves God. Professor. Um... It's a really weird name, and I cannot remember it. Um, it's actually very good. It's actually when I've it's looked at it. It's gonna bug me now. Yeah, I, uh, it's yeah. Uh, it's um, it's actually a very good martial uh, martial art. It's a very self defense heavy one. I think they could improve improve it, but you know, I don't have the experience of a lot of those guys. So again, that's me talking out of school. But um, if you did that and then went and did kempo karate, which is also an American version of um martial arts the way they would act when you go into their um their gyms would be completely different whereas if you go to judo and then you go to japanese jiu-jitsu and then you go to karate you act the same way with slight differences but in general there's a cultural standard that you go by um and i kind of i to me the that's part of the the quaintness of of a traditional martial art. And I think that, I don't know. That, that, yeah. I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> He's given up. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I come from a similar sort of background, so it's like, I'm just used to doing it now. It's like, I mean, yeah, it's like you say, as you were saying, like you go to, um, well, I had, I had an example in my head and it's now gone because that bloody Hawaiian thing. <laughs> I'm just looking it up now. I will find it. I literally have it on a tab in my, on my screen in a second. Um, it begins with a K, I can't think of the rest of it. Uh, God. But um, yeah, it's like, so the difference between sort of going to a kick and a That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the difference between going to like a kickboxing club like, Jeff, like in Japan and then going to, say, I don't know, a Kudo club. Mm. But there's, there's still got the same rough elements of, there'll be the same basic etiquette and things like that. But then if you go to Kudo or even certain forms of Kenjutsu, there's going to be a lot more of that on top of all the basic stuff that's kind of the universal but yeah it's yeah. always interesting I quite, again I, I i like going and looking at stuff like that because i'm a nerd i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah for, people always find it really weird that you can be nerdy about martial arts they don't seem to it doesn't seem to fit there's an awful lot of geeks an awful lot of geeks and people who work in it pick martial arts as well <laughs> yeah i 90 percent of the people i know who just from my keto for example work or have worked in it myself included <laughs> And I used to be the broadband specialist for BT local business in Kent. 
point made. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we had a we had a seminar like a meet. Okay, we had a um, after seminar sort of like meal somewhere, and we decided to just sit around the table and count how many people out there worked in IT in some way, shape, or form. And it was about ninety percent of the table. <laughs> Clearly, there's a cultural issue there. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a, there's, yeah, there's definitely sort of like a whole. Well, I think I think it's because martial arts, as well as being like a social thing, are right, not like not team they're not a team social thing until you get to like sporting level mm. so they're kind of also considered solitary stuff you can you can train in a martial art generically speaking with obvious exceptions on your own yeah and, well, so you, 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 can, you can do it yeah with, and catters as well yeah. and catters yeah it's forms yeah so most you, you can do this on your own so i think it kind of they kind of draw on people who are maybe or are drawn people who are don't like huge great amounts of people are kind of drawn to them for that because yeah. you don't have to deal with like 300 people in a room that you're going oh i don't know anyone here when it's like 15 people in a sports hall at most yeah yeah i mean I, if you look at say karate kid if i think of most of the dojos i've been in most most people in in a dojo are like um like um the karate kid they're not like the guys from Cobra Kai. They're really not. No. That's not that that was the assumption, I think, at the time, but that's really not it. Um no. thinking about Scott Adkins again, actually, he said he was saying about how that's a fantastic film and it's the best martial arts film. You do worry about when he makes statements like that. Um <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean he did kind of explain himself. Yeah, yeah. But he did explain, but it's it's, it's one of the things of one there's no karate in it. Uh, <laughs> and what the hell is a degree kick? What the hell is the crane kick? I don't know where that came from. I mean, again, but then it's the whole Americanized idea of what karate was, wasn't it? It was the, it's what they were sold in films and sort of, uh, so they tried to emulate it and do film style karate. Which oh, have you have you actually noticed when when they look at when they look at martial arts, Japan and China became this become the same place in America if you talk about martial oh, arts. Oh yeah, because yeah, like, it's like when, Korea doesn't exist. <laughs> it's, the it's when they talk about karate and they mean kung fu I was like, oh, that's God, not yeah. the same like those two countries bit of a history especially with their yeah. fighting like but no no but every time it's just like oh you do kung fu oh okay no that's karate or you do karate no that's kung fu ah oh, well it's it's that thing no well look at the, 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 people. But the, the redo of um of karate kid the redo oh, that's not karate. It's no, just, there's the I, I think I counted it. I think I counted it. There's about eleven seconds of actual karate in that entire film. And that yeah. is the bit where he's watching the TV, looking at the guy doing karate, and then changes channel. It's also the insult to um Japanese people that you got someone like Jackie Chan, definitely mm. not from the right to no, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. there's issues from their backgrounds of picking someone like yeah. Jackie Chan to supposedly I mean, teach someone yeah. karate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends, because again, it goes back to the whole, even with karate, there's like that whole divide, isn't it? It was about like, you know, Okinawan karate versus like mm. the, West, the other side of it, which is basically imported from uh, Chinese boxing. So you've got uh, two sort of- Sander? Uh, 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 Sander, yeah, Sander yeah. and yeah, they're Chinese shadow boxing robots. Um, so you've got, You've got the original stuff that was completely on its own developed from uh, the Okinawa and all the all the which looks nothing like the rest of what people think of karate. Mm. And then you've got the because then Shotokan's the main thing that seems to be all over the world. But and I'm saying this as someone who doesn't do karate as well, but I know enough about it to know the difference between them. But yeah, I mean Sh yeah. Shotokan is oh, so westernized. Um, I, I'm I'm more yeah. with the Okinawa and and at Goju Ryu, I don't have any, I don't have an issue with either to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, but um, that's that's digressing. Um, but then, yeah. But yeah, so does like that not cause? It, do you not think maybe that's that's then part of the issue of trying them trying to modernize it in terms of, um, Sorry. in terms of media, and actually it becomes this is where I, I it it becomes a we're no longer using actual martial arts this is just cultural appropriation at this point this isn't actually celebrating anything this is just us going meh yeah. no, each cool. other and we'll call it something <laughs> wear a gi awesome i mean that <laughs> there's chris farley did more martial arts in beverly hills ninja yep. than the guy did in the first karate film <laughs> 
in the in the first Karate Kid film. Kid, yeah. I mean, yep. um, <laughs> yeah. just, in but fact, there's some stuff that Chris Farley did. It's actually pretty good. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, got, um, Miyagi himself wasn't. He was an actor. He was a comedian. He wasn't even an actor. He was a he was yeah. a comedian. Yeah. He had no training in anything, so yeah. they just had to adapt it to what he, at his age, physically could do, which was mm. not much. Wax on so wax off. Him stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's it yeah, is. It's, yeah, I'm I'm not as I'm not as sold on things like Karate Kid because I, I, I it loses all of the culture and replaces it with an idea of what America sees the culture as. Yes, um, very much so. You know, they even the even the guy they got to play Mr Miyagi was not um, not Japanese. Japanese. He was <laughs> very firmly American for a start. Um, he, may, he was from a, a Asian heritage, but he was yeah. born, raised, I think even his parents were born and raised in America. Very American accent, if you ever actually heard him in interviews. Um, had no, like you say, had no background or anything else. He's a, com, um, a comedian. He's a comedian, stand-up comedian, yeah. <laughs> it's just nothing. Um, so, I mean, look, obviously looking at that side, and it has um, its, its goods and bads and things like that. I have issue with the, the, the way that we kind of deal with it in the media to try and liven it up and I think we lose the culture mm -hmm. there, especially in films. Don't get me wrong, some films are far better. Actually, thinking about it, even though I'm going to be talking about this more next week, Debt Collector, although I'm not entirely sure what Scott Adkins is meant to be doing in that film, <clears throat> because a few of those movements aren't from the same martial art, but um, mm. he literally, he basically calls out these, um, these guys who are trying to um, buy out his dojo as being McDojo, basically. He's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, you know, stop giving people black belts over a weekend. So he actually calls them out. And that's actually quite nice to see in a film of someone not yeah. just being a westernized thing of like, oh yeah, we can do this, we're gonna be, it's, no, 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 I was taught properly, you piss off. Like, you know, that, that was quite nice. That was actually not, um, not Yeah, I think that's one of, the, one of the things I actually really liked about that. Cause it's quite early on in the film as well. It's like yeah, right it's, at the yeah. start of the film basically. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's just, he's just there just going to piss off. <laughs> I'm yeah. handing out black belts every two days, two seconds, it's, you know. Well, it's, it's that Again, piss taking beginning. The, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he, he literally on. says to them, he said, because he says to them at one point, because um, he says, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll fight you for it. And they're like, what? Like a kung fu film? He's like, yeah, like a kung fu film. And she's just <laughs> effectively taking the piss out of itself at the beginning. Um, oh, yeah. But, um, which, I mean, Scott Adkins does have a tendency of doing. Um, his accent, of his own accent in Avengement was quite interesting. Because... Um, He's from the part of London. I think he's from the area that he was meant to be from in that film, and he made his own accent worse. I'm like, that's where you're from. Um, Again, I think that might be on the acting perceived sort of accent. Sorry, Scott. Stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm just guessing based. You know. Yeah. Um, so it's, it could be worse. It could be Jason Statham doing anything American. But does he really try? <laughs> I don't think he cares. <laughs> but so actually, thinking about Jason Statham, again, is actually a backwards one that's quite nice because he, like, unlike a lot of actors who don't do martial arts and then just follow choreography, he... He's a martial got, artist. <laughs> well, he became a martial artist, like, more during it. He, like, he did a bit oh, of yeah. karate, I think, when he was a kid. But then when he started being the hard man in films, he was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go back to doing martial arts. He's like, he hadn't done it for about 10 years and just went... Okay, I'm going to go back to karate. I'm going to do some kickboxing and uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because I'm in LA. Cool. Um, and suddenly it's just like, oh shit, he's gone back to it. Cool. Um, considering he was like an Olympic or and British yeah, team a, diver. <laughs> not a brilliant one. I think he was, um, I think he came 10th or something. But I mean, but, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I couldn't. To be honest. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. I couldn't do it. Um, but yeah, he was a yeah, Olympic diver. So. Like, yes, I mean, uh, high diving. It was like, you know, so yeah, he's got the yeah. aerial skills to control. It's, you know, the original Tom Davy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's, so it's quite nice that he kind of brought, he's kind of made sure to go back to it rather than take the westernized view. He's actually tried to learn some stuff so they can mix it in. It's quite nice like that. That's why I like a lot of the films that have actual martial artists in them because I feel like I'm getting some reality rather than just the choreography and the choreography can always be yeah. a bit too flashy. And the flashiness is where I have issue because it's not taking any of the so. God knows how much background. And I think that is a cultural thing. I know that sounds weird, but I think there's, you can almost recognize the, 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 the training and everything else when somebody does something rather than them just like, oh yeah, no, I've learned to, to, to punch. No. 
Um, if we look at it, going on from that and how the, the that kind of way of looking at it yeah. and, and the, the culture of it and everything like that, um, would you say that you you would feel that we, in terms of for the modern era and in terms of potentially protecting each other, um, considering what martial arts were created for, which was effectively that, although, uh, you know, there, there was, of course, um, some uh, conditions of your own life as well in some of them, if you're, for, for instance, if you're a samurai, um, but mainly they were to, you know, to protect yourself. Would you say we need to pull a few of those traditional martial arts more into the forefront and make them more like the more modern martial arts which would be <clears throat> weirdly although most people watching um or listening won't realize more like things like taekwondo it's not old guys it's really really not an old martial art um it's like 48 wasn't it 1948 something like that yeah it's really not old it's it's bit post-war i mean yeah um, i mean aikido was I mean, Aikido, since it, when it was renamed to Aikido, that's only, what, 60s? Yeah, but that's, that's, that's more of a renaming and jigging stuff around. Renaming let's around be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, before that, he was teaching Daito do, so it was under... Yeah, so yeah. it's like... That's definitely... But the thing with Aikido is, it's both. It's pre- and post-war. So it's kind of got the two elements, and then you just have this massive divide where people go, oh, no, it's all about peace and love and this, and it's like, have you seen some of the techniques from the pre-war stuff? There's yeah. a bayonet cutter in some forms of this. <laughs> I mean, that is a little bit how I see um, judo versus Brazilian jiu-jitsu, hmm. because they both come from the same background. They're both um, offshoots of Japanese jiu-jitsu. For, yep. Again, for those who didn't realise, judo comes from uh, jiu-jitsu, it's not the other way around, and BJJ comes from JJJ. Um, they but they both have that background that's why they both have groundwork that have a lot of similarities when you get to it but judo has that idea of no i need to throw somebody off of something or i need to disarm them as i take them down and things like that that you find in judo that in brazilian jiu-jitsu it's let's throw them on the ground and beat the crap out of them um because it's more you know it's it's brazil that it was brought up in which is you know i i remember getting told by a guy from brazil once that you're almost definitely going to get mugged and the guy's going to have a gun. However, he probably can't afford the bullets. So <laughs> um, it's that kind of, <laughs> that kind of just protect yourself. So do, do you yeah. think maybe we need to pull a lot of these martial arts into the modern day or, or do we just need to develop the movements? Is it a case of completely redirecting them and making them into, you know, let's let, we're going to rename them. We're going to redo that. Everything's going to change and we're going to make it far more realistic for nowadays and in effect, they become self-defense systems, really, where they're far more pliable than a martial system, which is a bitch to deal with because you can't step away from the norm, especially if you go into really traditional Japanese or Chinese. Um, or do we just need to go, OK, guys, this is how you slightly adapt this, um, which is all a lot of them do do it's i mean it man is effectively one of those people that just kind of went yeah but i can just do it this way um but again it's it's yeah. really weird actually it man is a weird one because it man effectively made his career on being the the rebel that didn't care about lineage and now it's a point of pride for people to show their lineage to it man and it's like yeah, I always mm. quite liked the irony of that, sort of, especially <laughs> in the films. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, oh, it's all about the lineage back to it, man. It's like, really? Because he was kind of just like, no, I just want to get shit done. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a bit like Bruce Lee. He's like, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, I always like it because you can always kind of tell which martial artists have listened to Bruce Lee by what they teach. It's like, Are there black belt in Jeet Kune Do? Mm, they probably didn't understand too much. Are you an instructor in Jeet Kune Do concept? Ah, uh, <laughs> you're the one I want to come to. <laughs> very different um but so which um, what do you think i think yeah i think it's kind of hard because like an awful lot of people and i'm going to call them out on this entirely and i should have mentioned them last time in the um things the uh real aikido people they bug the hell out of me because a their techniques are shit uh, <laughs> but they have become this whole hard style aikido we have all for street defense we're all which is complete bullshit um because half their techniques are so spinny and flash and showy it just wouldn't work ever um but they've kind of gone a lot in some of them and some of their offshoots of the original real aikido guys have gone to this whole right we're going to update everything make it more modern and make it work better for 
modern self def- modern self defense and updated dark the times and that and then they've kind of taken it so far that it's now completely not even so, relatable when you say the, highly... when you say the real Aikido guys do you mean a the, the serbian yes I think those guys. Okay. Yeah, the original serving guys. And if you look at some of the other offshot clubs of them, there are vid- I've, there's videos. I've seen a video of a guy doing one technique. He spins around five times, 360 degrees spins. Five Is he times. like a coloured a coloured gi? Is it that one? A blue gi. Yeah. Yeah. Completely blue gi. Uh, yeah. Him. Uh, he's one of their instructors. He's like st- does a technique, has a wrist lock on the guy, spins around five times. And I'm like, if you actually had that wrist lock on, his arm would be. You know, he the flesh on his arm would be burning and like tearing. Why is the fuck is he spinning around? <laughs> well, well, yeah. yeah. It's also the fact he's spinning around and it's like, okay, cool. I'm just going to stand here and pull you over when you fall backward, when you turn your back on me, or I'm going to punch you in the back or just sweep just, your legs out from underneath it. It's just, just to it's, quickly interject, anyone wondering what Tom meant about he should have called them out last time? If you go back into our playlist, <laughs> there is one that's called Charlatans. I think that's what Tom is talking about. Yeah, that's so what you know, because yeah. uh, there have been one in, in, ones in between. So yeah, go back and watch that one as well. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's like, there you go. And their whole emphasis that is that they're hard and like they do so many videos of them doing street defense, street aikido things where they're out. And I mean, I'll give the Ukis credit. The breakfalls are good because they're landing on concrete. Don't know if they're padded or not. Probably are, but they're out in normal clothes, jeans, boots, t-shirt, and stuff, and doing this stuff and being thrown on concrete. Mm. still throwing themselves so you would know, you still, then it's, so would you i think say... it depends because like some people have gone so far i'm still trying to go back to the original point i was gonna make that they some people have adapted it so much that it's now no longer not even relatable to what they were trying what the art was but then you get the other side of it is if you actually take some martial arts back further in their history they become more effective because again you're going yeah because <laughs> Yeah, because you're then going back to when it was designed to be used and you're just slight, you can just tweak and modify a few things slightly that way. Or in some cases, just go back to the original thing because it will be a lot more effective and is usable more than any of the modern adaptations of it. Yeah, that's actually, uh, thinking about it, that's actually a debate that happened on, one of, uh, on Joe Rogan's podcast between um, some MMA guys and Joe Rogan in that all the MMA guys, the active guys, were like, no, 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 Pancration and the old Spartans would destroy the field nowadays. Would destroy anyone, yeah. And he was just like, no, no, they wouldn't. They, you know, we've got so much better now and everything like that. And they're just like, yeah, but they didn't, they, there was no sports. Pancration, so anyone that, Spartans, Greek Spartans from Laconia, um, the idea of the Spartans was kill everything that's in your way, basically. So Pancration was created so that if you lost your shield and your sword and your spear, I mean, you've really gone wrong. But um, it's yeah. what you use to to deal with everything in your way. So yeah, you're, so if you go really, really far back, like you say, you have got those that actually are the original ones far more um, needed in a modern era than maybe the ones that have been retweaked to be modern. So I'm thinking about Aikido actually. So would you be more of the a fan of the Aikido flow guys? <sighs> <laughs> I can see what uh, I, I have seen his videos and I can see kind of where he's coming from with his ideas about saying, you know, I think I saw one of them was basically first technique from Randy Nakata was a version of Shomanate he did. Uh, and I can see where he's coming from, but it was just like, it wouldn't have worked the way he did it. I think you've probably seen the same video, I think. Um, it just, the way he was saying how it would work in the street, it just wouldn't work like that. One, because mm. of physics. <laughs> and two, the technique, he, the way he was doing it, obviously he's not going to drop the person he's showing on a video and actually hit the te- do the technique full on. But even for like, street use, what he was doing wouldn't work. Yeah, and I'm always... So long. It wasn't even... You wouldn't even call it Aikido anymore. It was just slap the guy in the face as hard as you can. Well, I mean, it is interesting because whenever I've, <laughs> works, I've watched but... <laughs> them... Yeah, whenever I've watched them, I've kind of gone, okay, I can kind of see the re- relation to Aikido. You can see where and... they're coming from. Yeah, it's... it's... I, can never te- I can never quite tell because he never... The, the one thing I do like about that, as I say, opposed to... Um, the, the other guys, um, the real Aikido guys, the real Aikido guys are, you know, we're the hardest, that's it. Whereas Aiki, yeah. Aikido flow is kind of like, yeah, this is what I'd do. And it, it's, yeah. I, it seems more like he's going, look, I can't really show you kind of what I'd really do because 
I'd get demonetized. Yeah. Um, demonetized, and I'd, I'd run out of bouquets bloody quickly. Yeah, so I, I can never quite tell whether he's like at which end of the scale he's he's actually at. Because I mean, yeah, he kind of like the, the stuff he took, like the theoretical side of what he's talking about and where he's. I think he's coming from. Again, I can't say for one hundred percent because I've never met or trained with the guy, so yeah. I don't know what he's trying to do with the videos he does to 100 percent degree but i kind of he kind of wavers and sort of like moves a bit up and down in in various videos so some of the stuff he shows yeah it's all right it's i can see the aikido where it's come from the aikido techniques are in there kind of but an awful lot of them i've seen and he's just like i can't remember what it was. i think it was a version of shionage he was doing mm. and it was so no longer Shionage. I could, I could see it. And I could see, okay, he's doing a form of Shionage, I think it was. Mm. But I was like, I had to stop and rewatch it. And that's as an Aikido instructor. I had to stop and rewatch a video to go, what fucking technique was that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, because it, was, it just had nothing of like, it was like, oh, this is my, how I would do this technique. And it's like, well, that wasn't that technique in any way, shape, or form. So, I mean, is that, does that become then the issue that if we try and modernize some of these systems as well, or if we try and teach them in any kind of realistic way, that actually it, it kind of breaks it down completely? Because we'd have to go full on sparring and it would almost be like, it would, it would be like a weird mix of self-defense and MMA if we were actually trying to turn some of these martial arts into full-on. Because, I mean, if you try to turn something like, oh, God, uh, Kajukembo. Well, actually, Kajukembo is probably the nearest to it because Kajukembo is actually pretty good. It's taking ideas from all over the place, and they are pretty good. They just attack each other in the mm -hmm. park. They're actually pretty good. But, I mean, if we took, say, um, Gojiro Karate or we took... Um, uh, Oh, oh, the Indian martial arts. Oh, God, oh, what's it called? Um, oh, begins with P. I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, it'll come it's a bloody back. long name. It's a bloody long name. Oh, well. yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the origins of Kung Fu. Um, but if we use ones like that... Depending we... who you ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shaolin Kung Fu. Um, if, we try to, <laughs> if we try to use them and we try to kind of modernise them, then or make them more relatable beyond what they might teach themselves as being relatable, then it turns into, a, it would turn into a seriously dangerous gym to be in. And now some people would argue, actually, that's, that's kind of what you should have. That's what you need. You know, you, you want that, but sparring in those kind of gyms where it's, it would be very You'd difficult. Break every time. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're not, you would run out of people to train with in a week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so to put it in perspective, guys, when I trained in KPAP, bearing in mind how long I've been training, uh, KPAP is Krav Panim El Panim. It's um, one of the other Israeli martial arts along with Krav Maga. has its basis in um, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu and Vinyan, and a lot of other things through Bartitsu. It goes around the houses a lot. Um, but I got severe, because we were going a, a lot more in on our sparring, I got a severe concussion because I did not have the reaction time to break fall. I hit the ground sideways. Um, I went into the wrong stance against a former North of England heavyweight Muay Thai champion um, that was training alongside me and we were going a bit more all out. And we were not going all out. We were just being, let's, let's go for it. And so that's us not going all out. <laughs> and if we had to go more all out in, from our own backgrounds, then then we cause even more issues. So there's that fine line between we want to keep the traditions, we want to keep it nice and be able to use it and make it more modern. Now, weirdly, the only, the only martial art I can think of that has managed to be incredibly effective and dangerous in a sport version, but also keep its mass traditions is judo. Um, it's, it's incredibly traditional if you go to the right club. Yep. Um, mid mid Sussex martial arts, just All right, Roger. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rod, Roger Roger not, Payne says is on. literally the reason I'm sitting here. Um, so <laughs> yeah, he's, no. he's a good sensei. Um, it's your it's your podcast, right? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's self defense society podcast. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I mean, so yeah. you're the main person, right? 
do any questions. Yes. So there, there are good there are good places all over the place and a tradi a very traditional um, dojos in the right places like uh, Mus Mas and various other places. But um, but then you look at say the sports side of it, and I mean you look at the Olympics last time and how angry everyone got at every other martial arts. Because I always find this funny because everyone was going, oh, well, the martial arts are bollocks, blah, 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 until I always said to them, now go and watch the judo. Because everyone was pissed off at the taekwondo, and rightfully so. It was shit. The, I think it's the ITF, Jesus Christ. That wasn't even points kicking. That was just flaring. Um, I'm not doing that conversation. <laughs> the WTF, although they're not the WTF anymore, but their version, they had a championship pretty much at the same time and were just kicking hell out of each other. Um, but you had a lot of other martial arts. And then you had judo, where I think halfway through the tournament, someone wouldn't tap, so they just broke their arm. <laughs> and everyone's like, wait, what? I was like, yeah, no, this is the Olympics, and judo isn't that nice. Everyone has this idea of, oh, no, no, it's, it's this one, because obviously Brazilian jiu-jitsu is the, the main and the nasty version of that. And, uh, no. I mean, if yeah, you do those, not. the sport version of, let's say, um, the simplest, the simplest and the bog standard two throws that I think you would learn if you're, if you're coming, if you're a white belt, red belt, depending on your, on, your, on your dojo, going into judo, Agoshi and Ippon Sienagi. The I two basic <laughs> ones. <laughs> yeah. Anyone just go back and have a look at the Olympics and see where those two were used because they were planted into the earth. They would, that was not, there's a very nice way of how you're told it's meant to look. And then there's effective way of how it's meant to look. Both of them are right. And, um, one of them is the sport version, which is technically the more modern version. So judo is a weird one because it has that crossover. Now, don't get me wrong, I have never seen a dojo for judo that does no gi. So how, how I mean, don't get me wrong, I can also use the stuff and have used the stuff without a gi on, but I don't know any dojos that do it no gi. So how effective is it in every day? Maybe they need to do... I'm trying to remember now because the one up in Sheraton, if even still in Sheraton, I think they had, because um, they did cross train, they did judo and um, uh, this, sambo. This isn't, is this a, a decent gym? Or? This is the one where they didn't teach you not to break for. Um, <laughs> Please tell me that is shut down. Uh, that is the one that I'm thinking of that shut down. Uh, I don't know if it's still being run. Um, but yeah, uh, they did, um, I think it was judo and sambo or something. But I think they had like a couple of sessions where they did, you didn't wear geese. So, uh, again, they were they were they were massively competition hounds, and just all they trained for was. What competition. do you competition do you go into that you don't learn how to break for? Oh, fuck. Again, this is this is my issue on it because you know the only person again, as I was saying on the charlatans thing, I went in there, told the head instructor I've got a background in some Aikido, done some judo and stuff before. Kind of then just went and kind of mingled in with everyone and didn't get shown by anyone there as a guy in a white belt and a gi how to break. For this is a while ago, guys, so we don't know. This could be completely yeah. different. Might have shut down. Might have been taken yeah, over. Yeah, this is a good. So, this is a good ten plus years ago now. Yeah, so this could be At absolutely least. different. Like it could have been taken over several times since. So, yeah. Um, yeah. don't don't yeah. sue Tom. Um, I mean, I didn't say it, so don't sue Tom. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm just relaying my experience from the <laughs> first and the only session I went to with them, and I was like, "You're not teaching breakfalls. Great. Anyone could break themselves." Uh, that is weird. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, but. It's unique though, not to have. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, no. I think, I think I remember them saying the no. I think they remember. I remember hearing someone saying they did no D. They want they did a or some no D sessions. Like, I mean, because uh, I just think of so the original kind of UFC, the original UFC, which was Gene LaBelle and I cannot remember the boxer, but to make it fair, they put the boxer in a gi. And then doesn't know Gene LaBelle. Fair. Don't ever step on the mat with Gene LaBelle if you're a judoka. He will beat you. Um, but don't, he, just he don't step on the mat with him. You're with Gene LaBelle <laughs> generally, yeah. That, so, um, anyone that's uh, ever watched any Bruce Lee films and wonders why the guy can grapple, uh, Gene LaBelle taught him. Uh, so um, Gene LaBelle is an incredibly um, accomplished martial artist, specifically in judo. Um, I think he's done some other things, but judo is Gene LaBelle's kind of uh, puppy. Uh, but for the original kind of UFC, I know that's a brand, but the original MMA kind of fight that was to show that you could mix them up, they just put the boxer in a gi. And that, that's kind of, that's where judo has an issue for me. It's like, well, if it was, 
modernized so that it was usable everywhere, shouldn't you just be able to do it? Why do you need the guy in a gi? <laughs> now, again, I love judo. It is my background. Yeah. I think it's incredibly effective. But is because I think that that is in my head. That's the one that that brings together the two worlds the most at present. But do we need to? Does that need to be modernized? And do we need to make everything more modernized to be effective? Well, I mean, coming from a Tamiki Aikido background, because Tamiki was a direct student of Chikido Kano, <laughs> you know, the guy who kind of made it. Mm. Um, an awful lot of our techniques in our syllabus, I think you'll find in the judo syllabus, there is a big difference in how we do them to how judo do them. Mm. Namely, we don't grab the gi, we grab the person. Mm. So you'll find, you can look at any judo textbook, you'll find some um, techniques where they literally grab a handful of sleeve, as much sleeve as you can get in your fist, and as much of the gi around the neck as you can as leverage points. We do those same techniques, just with the person, not the yeah, not so I mean, form they're wearing. And it's the point we made before, that a lot of these movements are just adapted because if they work, they work. It's just that people do them Definitely. differently. Um, actually, thinking about the, the, how you grab the gi as well, and that would actually be, in terms of self-defense for me, <clears throat> the changing point of where I would say it's more realistic, if, they had, if everyone had a gi on that is, um, the just... amount of times I would get told off when I was younger, because you can't strangle someone with their own gi in judo. You're not allowed to. You're not meant to, yeah. <laughs> meant to. However, <laughs> in reality, if you're being attacked like that, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I've got hold of it already. I mean, I would get told off a lot. I mean, and uh, that's why I ended up uh, learning how to just put chokeholds on quicker because I needed to let go of the gear occasionally but um so that there, again even there's there's little points like that where you just go actually no that the rule the rules cause an issue mm. so but then is it that we need to modernize them to make them effective are they effective without the modernization or should we just leave them the fuck alone there they are what they are like um i mean the obvious one being tai chi that there are versions of tai chi that can be effective if they're used with other things and it's not taken in in its own in, in certain context all that kind of stuff but should we just kind of go you know what it has its place leave it there leave it where it is it's got its place leave it where where its place is um mma has its place leave that where it is self defense has its place leave that where it is because i mean my because um, an argument i always have against um, people for say mma um when they go yeah but this is the most effective and i'm like yeah but if um if it's life or death and you're on the on the ground i'm going to put my elbow through your nose you're not trained to do that <laughs> you aren't trained how yeah. to use certain movements because they're not allowed whereas i would yeah. say in self-defense if it's within the rules of law it is allowed it's not necessarily trained the same way, but it yeah. is allowed. Well, so, so well, you can even say that MMA. Students, yeah. So you can even argue. Sort of thing, it's like, I'm going to drop a table on you. Where is that in your training regime? <laughs> so you could even argue, oh, MMA, the newer one. Well, actually, are you up to date? So modernization, which is thrown about quite a bit, and I mean, I've said it a couple of times, is, is does that just mean in people's heads? Does modernization for most people actually just mean we want it to look good? We want it to look good and look like they've got a bloody nose. Because you could, I mean, it doesn't take, part of me does think if I went into the octagon and just smacked someone in the face, made their nose bleed, but didn't really hurt them, you know, it's just bloody nose, that you'd still get a massive cheer and everyone be, oh yeah, that was amazing, just because there's a bit of blood. Whereas actually what yeah, I've done isn't like that it. effective. You know, it's not effective at all. I'm still screwed. Like I think I said in the last podcast of, um, when we had a guy come over from Japan when I was doing judo and he asked, you know, what's the best thing to do if someone attacks you in the street? And uh, we all came up with, you know, whatever move we, we wanted our favorite at that, for that week. Um, and he just went, no, you hit them as hard as you can. If they get back up, you run. Um, and I, I did like the fact that it's like eighth Dan, um, Japanese tiny little uh, black belt came over specifically. It was like, no, hit them, just, just hit them. Um, but so is it at the end of the day they all come down to just smack them see what happens um or is it that we need to develop our ideas on certain martial arts or i mean yeah i'll let you talk because i just i just ran otherwise 
Oh, I, I'm pretty much the same as you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, again, it's one of, it's one of those, it's an awkward question because, like, again, it depends on what you're looking for in a martial art. I mean, you're, if you're going into a martial art looking for something effective, then there are like hundreds and hundreds of martial arts you're not even going to bother looking at because you are never going to use them and legally get away with using them because they're, you're walking around with a sword, a bow and arrow, a spear. It's also <laughs> dependent on what you mean by effective as been, well. Yeah. I mean, I mean when you say effective, because actually that's a point, just quickly before I know because you're going to go uh, into it. Because in my head, because I've been doing self-defense so long, when you say the words effective, my mind goes to brutal. And I just think of yeah. three specific martial arts, and they're all Eastern. Um, uh, Penchak Salat, um, Filipino martial arts, and mm -hmm. Moi Baran. Yep. Uh, just, we don't care, basically. Yep. We don't care martial arts. So I think of the brutal, but, but then that's not necessarily what an individual might mean by effective. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, so, if, again, it down to the person who's saying the word effective, isn't it? It's kind of subjective. Yeah. I want an effective martial art. Okay, for what? Effective for what? Effective for weight loss? Effective for confidence building? Effective for... Mm. It, it's, yeah, but yeah, in terms of effective for self-defense or whatever kind of thing people think of as I'm going to pick a martial art for self-defense, one, don't <laughs> do self-defense. <laughs> exactly. Uh, two, um, yeah, if you're going to pick a martial art for self-defense that's really effective and you're in a country like, say, America, get a gun and learn how to use it. Guarantee you anyone trained in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from 21 feet is not going to be able to stop you if you've got a 9mm pistol aimed at them. No. And if they do, you're shit at using a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is where most of these arguments I find fall down with, oh, I want an effective martial art for the street. It's like, why? I think I've mentioned this before when we've talked, is the whole, I, the idea that people, I think it was the first one we did of these actually, was the whole, everyone has this idea they're going to be attacked by a professional fighter, which 99% of the time is not going to be the case. It's going to be, I remember I this. 99%, yes. I remember <laughs> this discussion and I remember my point, which was I teach people the other way around <laughs> because I get so many people that go, yes, Adam, but we're not going to get attacked by you. And my point is always, you don't know. Um, yeah. This is what, again, this same is what I point, say 99% of times. Yeah. yeah. It's the it's same just, point. It's you, you, yeah. why, why are you training to know, be a street but, fighter? Yeah. If you want to be a street fighter, yeah, wear armor all the time. Just go to the arcade. Yeah. <laughs> Play Xbox. Be a keyboard warrior on YouTube. Who cares? <laughs> and then, but then it's also like effective for various other things. Because like, again, if you're looking for a sport to do, then you're not going to want to go and do something that's been tweaked and modified and fucked around with so much that you're going to come out with an injury every session. You're going to get up, get really fed up with it, going to get really hurt and potentially end up not being able to do your job because you get a massive, seriously debilitating injury. Or in the case of somewhere like the States, you're going to have a medical bill that's the size of a fucking tree. It's, again, it all depends on what people look for. So yeah, I mean, I kind of think to a degree that certain martial arts just leave them to it so if you again it, it also goes down to like club level like if you want if you want to go to say a, you know or an association level whatever variant you have and where you are if you're looking for a style of karate you can do for fun for socializing and various other stuff but you could also use it then yeah fine go and find a club that trains like that and you will probably find them um i think what's the name jesse uh i, I can never prevent let's pronounce his surname i camp the german guy Oh, who's on YouTube? He's going going around and doing all the his massive yeah. thing around the world. Where he went and trained in um, China, went to Okinawa, and all these places mm. uh, to get to the roots of stuff. And then, kind of, he goes there and you see video clips of him getting walloped around by some of these Japanese instructors. And he goes, "Cool, show me that again." That's the kind of place you want to look for is people who are going, "Okay, how do I do that?" And what you want to learn from that. Whereas certain martial arts aren't designed for, you know, they're a martial art, but like they've been tweaked and taken in a way that they're not designed to be used as a fighting art anymore. They're purely for relaxation and health, which mm. to a degree still comes under martial arts. Cause if you're trying to stay in a fit and healthy situation with your body and you don't, you know, professional warrior, he gets a dislocated or broken shoulder. He's out of work or he's potentially dead in the next few days. Yeah. So they still, so people think like Tai Chi classic example, it's, you know, promoted promoted worldwide for health benefits and for helping various forms of arthritis and things like that still t counts as martial art because it came from a fighting form yeah i mean if you mix it, if you link it back in as well if you linked yeah. versions of it back into it 
it becomes it again. It's just yeah. in what form do you want to take it? Yeah. yeah. That's why I kind of like, I kind of think more along the lines of just leave it as it does. I don't think every art needs to be modernized to be made effective for whatever person, average Joe public thinks is an effective thing for street or whatever, or for fighting in a ring, because you don't need it if you're not going and looking for that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's, and like you say, it's effective for what you want it to be effective. So even if you're talking purely about self-defense, and I think I probably brought this forward as a topic because I get asked it the most because of being self-defense. It's like, mm -hmm. well, what's the best martial art? Or the, what, what for? For what? Um, <laughs> and it's just like, I always say to people, because people will take the piss out of Aikido and they'll take the piss out of Touchy, whatever. Um, my response is always, at what point in the fight do you think you're going to come across these people? Because granted, if you're a good boxer, and I don't mean someone that's just been to a class, I mean, if you're a good boxer and you can create range, yeah, in a fight in a club, you've got the advantage over Aikido. If oh, you're definitely. stupid enough to grab them first, then you don't. Not so much. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing, is that everyone kind of goes, oh yeah, but it just what happens like that. I was like, how many times have you been to a club and they've just punched you? Or have they grabbed you first or pushed you? And it's like, well, now you've got something that you didn't think of as being that now suddenly becomes effective because the second you've come into close quarters, that's now become effective. If you move out of it, right, now you're out of the range of Aikido, they're very unlikely to have the advantage unless they've moved into something else. And it's like, if we take four um, well-known martial artists or people, um, Conor McGregor, um, Khabib Nurmagomedov, um, uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and uh, Ronda Rousey. Yep. If, if you get um, into a boxing ring, all of them will lose to Mayweather. He was playing with Conor McGregor when he soundly beat him. They will all, if you have to stick by boxing rules, he will beat them. If you get into an octagon, um, then Mayweather's fucked. Um, yep. Conor McGregor will have an a, a, more of an advantage. Uh, Nurmagomedov definitely will, and so will Ronda Rousey. If you get into a judo mat, now uh, Floyd Mayweather, yeah. he's fucked, but so's Conor McGregor because, yeah. Um, obviously, Ronda Rousey is an Olymp uh, Olympic uh, judoka, has an advantage, and Nurmagomedov is a wrestler. Now you go on to wrestling, Nurmagomedov is at the top. And now if you take it into the street, it becomes a bit more iffy, but Nurmagomedov is probably the one that comes out of it more because he's the fucker that would mess about with bears. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, Floyd Mayweather will look flashy, but be the one that has to watch everyone. McGregor has actually been beaten up on the street before, but he probably took a, took a few injuries from them as well. Um, Ronda Rousey, not too sure about, but, but Nurmagomedov is from, you know, he's a Cossack Russian bear wrestler you know it, yeah. all of them in their um certain in areas their sport, in their sphere, have yeah. an area you know judo mat right your best in the octagon you've got it in the boxing ring you've got it on the street you've got it all of them are incredibly good at what they do you know nemakomedov is undefeated and is one of the most feared mma fighters in the game by martial artists as well as just by mma martial artists um, Rousey in judo is incredible. She went to Japan and fought the men in uh, judo, which if anyone knows anything about Japanese jiu-jitsu, the fact that she was even allowed to fight them in Japan says how good she is at judo. Um, yeah. And then you've got, you know, you've got Conor McGregor who has um, time after time and again come back after defeats to show that he has got at least some, some heart to do these things. And as an athlete, is probably one of the better ones. So again, yeah, you've got that, which one is the most effective? What the fuck for? Um, yeah. You always get it, you get it all the time. And I get it a lot from MMA guys and a lot of other things that people come forward and they'll be, you know, it's, oh, well, yeah, but what should I do first? Or yeah, but what can I do here? And if I know the person that I might have an idea of what they're after, but a lot of the time when they're saying what's effective or you know, oh, but isn't isn't that just a, an old world thing? Well, it, it depends. Um, don't get me wrong. I, in my head, I'm having an argument myself because there's still part of me that kind of thinks <laughs> I want to be able to use it. 
And I don't, that's, that's what I've done. I've tried to take the best of what I've learned over the years to make them effective. Now, I probably haven't succeeded. The stuff I'm positive I have missed, but I do my best to be able to do it. And that's why I have a, a, a decent reputation. I don't think there's anyone that, I don't think I have a bad reputation anywhere in, in, in the field. Um, and so, yeah, sorry guys. Um, I say the field cause I, I, I genuinely don't care about any other one martial artists and they're the people I care about. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's a really bitchy comment, but you know, I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, it's, in, in, it's, and I say that because I'm 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 backtracking on the the charlatan thing as well because I can think of so many martial artists that are incredibly popular uh-huh. with universities, with the media, with everyone else who I'm pretty sure would crap themselves if anyone actually tried to do anything. Um, I'm thinking specifically of someone that's really well known for holding an umbrella. Um, so, but you know. Th- obviously we, we have this idea in, in society of we need to make it effective now. And I think society's moved that way almost fluidly itself. Cause like we have that guy in um, China who got into massive trouble for it, but that started taking on Tai Chi. Um, oh, yeah. And there's good, good and bad bits about what he did. He says he did it because he was getting so annoyed about the fact that they were saying how it was the best martial arts and it just irritated him. But how ingrained really was that? Was it just that he wanted to, you know, be the, 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 the tough guy and actually leave, the, leave it alone? It's part of your culture. Leave it alone. It's, it's, it's doing no real harm. Or was it doing harm? And it's, it's, it was almost yeah, the yeah, westernization yeah. thrown back at China, which is why China got so pissed off about it. Cause they're not, they're not one for the kind of that, that level of westernization, especially in their martial arts. Um, so it's, it is interesting when you get into it because it's what way do we go? Um, because you've got the modern martial arts, you've got ones that are 70 years old, 60 years old. I mean, what Kajikembo, I think is from the eighties. Kempo karate is from the eighties. I mean, real Kempo karate. The, and the guy is American. I will give him this. The guy is American, real Kempo Karate, and it is good. Is American. Um, it is not from um, a place in Durham. Just saying, if you've been to that club, um, <laughs> it's uh, you know they, are, they do have the background. So you've got some amazing, <clears throat> amazing um, modern martial arts that do I mean, try Kyokushin's and reach modern. that gap. Sorry, Kyokushin, the Shinkikushin United. <clears throat> they're bloody modern. It's, yeah, you know, it's all. Um, is it like, I can't remember how old it is, but it's in relative terms in martial arts. It's ridiculously modern. It yeah. wasn't until a um, bunch of uh, oh, Dutch kickboxers <laughs> and Nick and Dutch kickboxing then yeah. completely changed what was Kyokushin from one thing to being. Oh no, we're actually now just going to toughen up our legs and kick trees and posts and. I mean, Kyokushin karate. For those of you that have ever heard me talk about it, it is the, my, my most favourite of karate. Um, because Kyokushin Karate, the guy effectively just went, I'm taking over this incredibly ingrained um, martial arts style that we are known for. I'm taking over. Everyone now does this style. And if you don't win the world championships, I'm going to kill myself. So what the fuck is going on there? Um, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's incredible. Isn't that, is that not like the 50s? Like, that's really recent. It was, it? Yeah, really. Uh... Yeah. 40s, 50s, I can't remember when. Yeah, I think it's actually, it's more modern than, than um, original Taekwondo. Yeah. Um, but then, I mean, the one that, are, there, there's, there's some like wonderful tra- traditional ones that are made into jokey things now as well. That actually is quite nice because they're, they're almost remembered in a different way. And I'm thinking specifically, I don't, if you manage to get this, I'll be amazed, but I, um, it's a, an English martial art and it is a martial art. People don't remember it as a martial art. People don't think of it as a martial art because it's taken the piss out of so much. But when we think about hardening shins, it's shin kicking. Got sort of shin kickers. Yeah. <laughs> That's have a martial art. Video? I mean, that is a have martial you see, art. Have you seen a video of Phil and... Um, <laughs> Phil oh, and yes, uh, they have. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, if either of them... That was a joke. Them, if either yeah, of them that, went that down was to the joke. <laughs> That was a joke, but you can see Phil, they're just going, oh, after oh it's crippling. the shins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so anyone that doesn't know Cotswold um, shin kicking is um, traditional. I think it's the 1700s, I no think. No idea. 
he's a pretty traditional like it's it's actually got some years behind it um I, and I think it was just a, a manly kind of I'm the toughest one but is it is is a martial art it, it, that's what it is it has a it has a system it is about it, it it fits everything that says it's a martial art um but it, it's about being the toughest and you effectively hold on to each other and take turns kicking Coaching each, each other's other shin. shin you 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 stuff straw down your shins that's it there's no shin guards it's straw trust me guys straw does fuck all fuck um all. and you have some and and then I've, I've do you do you remember what it is um what you say to um to give up though I can't remember off the top of my head. It's brilliant. So in, in so in most martial arts, it's double tap, quick double tap, or or or, you know, or whatever. In shin kicking, it's sufficient. <laughs> that that is that is the double tap in shin kicking is sufficient, which is the most. You could not get more British than that. <laughs> it's the most British thing. <laughs> uh, that it's, it's a very no. Come on, that'll do. That'll do. Um, but so you do have actually really traditional stuff that probably hasn't changed that much because it was just a big burly farmers kicking each other probably hasn't changed that much and actually probably has toughened them up quite a bit you know it probably is it probably does mean that if they get into a fight on a saturday night and they kick someone they're probably breaking their legs um so you know even the jokey stuff actually maybe there's there's some there's some use for it so it, it is interesting because it, it is that thing of, um, like you say, there are some martial arts we should potentially just go, let's leave them alone. Let's just leave them alone. They're not harming anyone. Yeah. But then I suppose the argument is yeah, yeah. it's giving false confidence. And I think that's where people get an issue in that. Are we just making people think they can do something they can't? There's deal. Yeah. I've got a black belt. I'm invincible. Bollocks. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. You've got a black belt. Yeah. Congratulations, you're an experienced beginner. Yeah. yeah anyone, <laughs> anyone out there that first hasn't degree, been in these discussions step. before? Yeah, anyone that hasn't been in these discussions with me and Tom before, a black belt doesn't mean anything. A black belt is effectively you committing to being to, to actually doing something. It's a bit like having a um a driving license. No one calls you an expert driver the second you get the driving license. Um, but and you have a learner's permit and then you build up to get in the driving license. A black belt is the driving license. Okay. You've got all the other belts there. You'll learn a bit. And then you get to your black belt. No one, no one's going to call you an expert straight away. You've just now learned to drive. That's it. Yeah. Um, a black belt gets respect from the lower belt because they've been doing it for longer. That's the only respect. Yeah. That's the reason for the respect. Um, and you'll hear me, um, me and Tom use um, terms like O oh, sensei rather than sensei sometimes, and there's far more respect for them. But I mean, the, 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 it's a weird reason because depending on the translation, some versions of O oh, sensei just mean old teacher, <laughs> effectively. It's basically, it's the old guy that's been teaching it for the longest. Um, so the respect reasons are very different and black belt, no guys, just because someone's got a black belt, does not mean they are um, an expert in any in way, any way whatsoever. Um, especially depending on which club they've been. Yeah. In well, like, so, um, we said to some of our students, when we're talking about you know, if we're going for, uh, potentially looking at going for third down at some point, and we go, or we have uh, instructors come down who are fourth down and above. We go, we are nearer you on the like the scale of time trained than we are from a fourth down. Like that, yeah, that's that's a point that people always miss is when you so to get your first belt, depending on how good you are, or whether you've trained before, two three months to get your first um, belt. Your very first belt would be when you pitch in and buy a uniform. Oh, yeah. I'm talking, they okay, uh, okay, first um, earned belt. First earned um, belt, three months. Yeah. yeah. Three so months. Uh, and, and it, on average. It's, it's dependent and potentially, the only reason I say two months is potentially um, if you were Not a junior right. and you're, you're just coming back or you've come from a different martial art. Um, sometimes you can wangle it a little bit. Um, but then you can almost get that, depending on the martial art and depending on what level, you almost kind of grade up every three to six months until you get to something like a black belt doesn't work that way anymore and actually the distance from uh, say, a black you, belt well i mean brown belt green green one. green blue is where we sort of go no you've got to be six months of these oh that's what i mean so, three to six yeah, months yeah. but then when yeah. you hit black belt 
No, nah, that's that's it's not how we roll anymore. A um, number of years. <laughs> yeah. So all that stuff you just learned, that's great. Now learn it again and but this. Better. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> It's, it's effectively like going through university, going, great, I've got a degree. Okay, um, can you start back at class R, please? Um, <laughs> then people, people yeah. always think it's, you've got it, and that, oh, well, it's just the next grading. Um, it's not. The next grading is very different. And actually, when you get to, say, seventh, Dan, um, it's actually no, depending uh, on your interpretation, before. it is no longer about true grading. It's about your background and your time spent training because they become more honorary than earned and i may have got myself into trouble with at least three international bodies on that one but they're not you're, you're not you're not necessarily going around throwing it's people no longer, it's, and it's no longer a technical grading because there's yeah. no more syllabus you've got no more techniques to play with yeah you're, it's, it's basically you just have to be that much better than you were x number of years ago yeah usually yeah. i think it's about 10 by that point but yeah, so basically, this is why um, you'll find uh, both me and Tom quite sceptical if someone, say, in their 40s is an eighth, says they're an eighth or ninth down black belt, because that really shouldn't be possible. <laughs> yeah, Unless they were doing it since they're a fetus, that really shouldn't be possible. F late 50s, 60s? Mm, depends on when they started. Um, but, depends on the art as well. Yeah, but yeah. Um, if they started when they would start in a lot of the arts, three, four years old, yeah, it's possible. But for a Westerner who probably started as a teenager, it becomes quite dubious. So, yeah, it's, um, I know we've gone back into the charlatans and whatnot here, but just a point to point out there, guys, that um, it, it crosses over to the conversation topic. It does, it does, because the modernization of it a lot of the times comes from people who are suddenly black belts and think, oh, yeah, let's, let's, mess, let's mess around, let's make this more modern without actually learning much more. Um, so, you know, they will have done one martial art for their entire life. Um, there'll be a second down black belt and suddenly, well, let's make this more usable. And you're thinking, well, you've not done anything else for a start. Um, you're, you're not even at the top of your own martial art. <laughs> mm. Don't know how much we can trust you. It's a bit like being, uh, which mentioned last time, Frank Dukes. Who I think in reality was a first Dan black belt. Like he was actually a martial artist. But he was a he was a first Dan shot a can I think in real life, uh, rather than like a yeah. sixth Dan world champion bullshit that he came up with. And he recreated himself and made himself the top of an American um, thing. So yeah, you've got to be wary, and that's why that's why what we mean by charlatanism can kind of overlap with this. Because if you want to modernize something, why? Like, and I know, I know this is throwing it back at me, guys. I'm well aware because I'm a self-defense instructor. Um, but I also am a self-defense instructor who um, I have a martial artist with me who can point out the fact that just simply looking at the way I move shows that I'm not one of these other people. <laughs> um, and also, I, I will never state that it's, it's perfect. And I think that's the, the, big, the big difference as well. And I'm, yeah. I actually want to see the errors. I think that's the big thing as well, is a lot of these, I think that's where the issue comes as well, is a lot of them don't want to see their errors. If something goes wrong in my class and something I do, just someone just completely turns it around or messes it up, I'm like, fuck, what the hell? Brilliant. How the hell did you do that? Like, what, what, do it what, again. what's your background? What's your background? Shit, I should have trained in that one. Right, cool. Let Show me. Cool. Right. Because that's something that I think is, is a good development, and especially that is a more modernization. But... That's something that if you say you did that in a Shaolin Kung Fu school <laughs> or a, um, you know, a traditional Japanese karate school, I, I mean, I'm just wondering how many times you'd get hit before they threw you out of the dojo. Um, it's because it's just not allowed. It's as we said yeah. about Ip Man at the beginning, Ip Man was he was almost blacklisted effectively because he dared to suggest that all of the stuff that had come before him wasn't necessarily usable. Um, and, and, and so but I think that's where you get the issue with the traditional stuff is, is when they, it's not so much that, so we can leave them alone and we can be, and we can use them as they are. I think it becomes an issue when maybe we, they don't accept their issues or they don't accept oh. their problems. Because to me, 
a decent judoka or um or, or um Bartitsuka, whatever martial art you want to go with i always want to throw Bartitsu in there um we'll literally say to you okay for what you want to do this isn't as effective why don't you go and do this yeah. um and mix, mix them up one train in both yeah. that'd be really helpful for you i think the movement in that one will help you in this but and then you've got some of them that have modernized that will go or or, or the really traditional ones that's like no 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 that's you're wrong and there's no discussion it's just you're wrong the lineage says you're wrong therefore you're wrong um and so i think that that's where the debate comes a, a little bit yeah it's yeah I mean, well again kind of we kind of as i said earlier but sometimes you're just like looking back at the earlier stuff and re retraining the original earlier stuff we started doing, looking at and training in um Dota do over at dover and just so much of it like, you look at the techniques in i mean especially phil has done a lot of this like there were certain techniques in our syllabus we look at that and we go and he's gone yeah, but why do we do that that way and he's then gone and talked to uh, howard and joe and other people in Dota and they go well because this and they would say you know it's, like, it's usually something really small and something so ridiculously simple to be said that then makes it go actually that makes it like 25 times more effective and efficient in the movement that suddenly you're just moving a few millimeters with one limb or one part of a limb and the guy's mm. on the floor and it's yeah. like yeah so we've kind of gone back to it and the way we look at it because again with Tamiki syllabus is we are Tamiki was trained in Daitaru he wasn't taught Aikido mm. <laughs> So technically the whole like, Tamiki Aikido thing is it's not really a real, a real name of it because Aikido, the name Aikido didn't exist at the time he was being taught. <laughs> There's many so, things yeah. that didn't exist in the old days of martial arts yeah. that we have now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, so like we've gone back and we're, we're training and mucking around with like Daitaru stuff and going, actually, yeah, this makes so much more sense on a physics point of view mm. and on, actually as, makes the technique so much simpler and easier and it has so much more effect. And so we've kind of gone back and looking at it that way and just because we've seen videos and we've called out clubs, I mean, all of us, where we've just gone, why are they doing that? Because we cannot see a physical point in what they were doing. No. Because they've tried to, because again, they've gone, oh, I think this is what, they've sort of semi-modernized it in some clubs and we've just stood there and gone, what? Just kind of like looked, looked at it and bewildered and gone, like I was saying on the charlatans one, the um, the weapons cutter that me and Christoph did were doing in yeah. this in this Aikido club where we were doing the version we were taught, the one of the versions that we know, <clears> and he was then saying to his students, "Oh yeah, this movement here is a strike up into the groin and that." And I'm just like, "You're on your knee in front of the guy. There's no way you're going to be able to strike up into his groin from that position." And secondly, I'd be more worried about protecting the head. If there's behind you, you know, and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, this is a strike up to the groin. No, it's not a strike to the groin. It was just, it's a simple, you're moving the weapon back to prep for the next strike. <laughs> so from the, the, the pull of the sword, because it's not the way around that is... No, it was a, yeah, it was a joke. Never the way, staff it's, technique. Oh, yeah. it's a staff technique. I was going to say. It was a staff technique. Was it was a staff technique. Was like, yeah, it was a staff technique where you, it's um, uh, t numbers 21 of the 31 Joe Kata. And he was saying it's you drop down and you skew up, up behind you towards their groin and it's like but i have trained and done the counter counter where the other person has a joe you're not going to hit them in the groin because their next step is backwards that just sounds like kill bill it, yeah it yeah he was adding this thing i can't remember why, why where it came from and we kind of we just did our thing and we were like no and the tip of the joe is down by our foot because or down by the floor because it's prepping for a next strike coming up at the person's face kind of thing yeah. it's like or towards their throat <laughs> it's like <clears throat> it's very strange because i mean i find a lot of these do again, come modernized it to do that and it was just like <sighs> yeah. why it's a it's an it's an old weapons system chances not, of you using it one slim to none two uh, it, it, they're not going to be attacking you in a traditional weapon system in the street yeah they're gonna be trying to swing a baseball bat style at your head i mean a lot of them <laughs> depending on <laughs> I think if you, if with some of them, it, uh, just a discussion or listening to them talk and then this, uh, watching them train a little bit, you can usually decipher the reality of, especially if they've called it more modern or, or more usable. Because 
for instance, um, Filipino martial arts, FMA, I see quite a lot as um, called by people as an effective street defense. Now, as a martial art, as I said earlier, in the brutality, it is one of the ones that I would potentially say, if you want to have that, that mix, that is one of the ones you go for. Um, and I do hear a lot of those instructors kind of going, oh, yes, and th this is obviously this. But then when you watch them and kind of go, no, what you've done there is you've done the Jason Bourne version of that stuff. That's, yeah. that's no good. That just looks nice. Um, and yeah. I, I, there's a... There's, um, Actually, the um, founder of the society, um, I, I, he was asking about what uh, kind of club to go to. And I suggested a club to him because I just went, I've, I've actually listened to the guy talk. And this is a, uh, one as well. Um, personally, I f feel when the guy is incredibly calm, when he's talking to camera, he's <laughs> not being a dick. He's not saying how amazing his club is. He's just going, this is the kind of stuff we do. And obviously, you know, you can do it. And there's no, there's no ego behind it. And then you watch it's it. Not and it's Rex not... Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah. And then you watch it and you kind of go, oh, they're showing actual sparring. Like he's not, not every hit is landing. Not every like um, movement is perfect. And that makes me kind of go, okay, that, that place, that's the gym you want to go to. Because he's not, he's not concerned about how good he looks or his version looks. He's concerned of, this works this is as traditional to my style as i can do it but i also think it works in in the street i think that's <clears throat> the ego is where it, it, it you get an issue especially between the old and the new it's mm. it's that kind of because especially with the asian martial arts is i think a lot of the pomp and circumstance of them is effectively them as as if it's them looking down on their children you know well of course you think you know what you're doing you know, we've, we've been around for far longer. And it, that, it does feel like that sometimes, as if things like jujitsu and those martial arts are looking down on Krav Maga and, you know, Taekwondo going, oh, well, maybe when, you, maybe when you're a bit older. And it, it does feel like that sometimes, yeah. um, even though there is effectiveness in, in, in a lot of the other ones and ones that aren't them. Um, but I think that it is that ego thing. And when you, when you take that ego out and you get someone that actually is just doing their martial art properly and maybe using a bit of modernization, but not necessarily in a way that is cocky. I, yeah, that does become a, a more kind of usable martial art to me. Um, I say this as someone who's had to deal with quite a lot of those cocky self-defense and martial arts guys. Um, they're hilarious. Um, <laughs> and especially don't like me because as well as being generally younger than them, I also look younger than I actually am. So it's brilliant for them because it pisses them right off. Um, but <laughs> we've got, um, oh, what's her name? There's a, one of the other um, supportive skills instructors for the fight unit I work with in London, uh, in mm. London Drama. And she's done this thing where she put, uh, she's, um, again, she comes from like, uh, I think it's a Shaolin Kung Fu background and she does lots okay. of weapon stuff. Again, but it's all you know, traditional martial art, but also fits in with, uh, what we do for fight work for film and stuff mm. uh, and she did a thing where she pointed this out brilliantly is that she put this for a for just a really short form video out online for people to look at to try out and learn and she's done it from every angle and stuff so you can literally look at it and just, you're literally copying just a solo form mm. and then people are sharing their versions and videos back with her and 99 percent of the guys who were f sending the video back had added flashy kicks and other stuff to it that weren't in the original form because it looked cool yeah and, and that's her, that's her instagram line. stories for like yeah and her instagram stories for like about a week and a half it was basically just commenting at like every it was all the other ones she had from women trying it was the space that had the same form no extra kicks no extra flash and it was mostly guys but there was like two exceptions to it where they just went no i'm just going to follow the standard routine because that's the foundational routine don't need to add stuff to it and she was she spent a week and a half going well that's no just follow what's fucking shown <laughs> is that and that's, that's, for a reason that's the fine line between modernization you know if, if they'd come yeah. back and added something that was oh that's kind of interesting to put in there but they didn't they just came back and added flashy that's where is it is it modernization is it usability or is it something that looks good in a ring um it just reminds me of the whole um that uh instagram 
fad where people were doing spinning back kicks to take off the um oh the bottle challenge the bottle the, yeah the bottle caps <laughs> bottle and cap it was challenge. the one time where i had a lot of respect for um for krav maga um because everyone was doing them you know donnie yen um or everyone was doing them everyone yeah and then one of the Krav Maga guys um, from uh, Israel literally just came out, picked the bottle up, the Krav just went, why am I fucking about? I was like, <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that. That's, that's perfect yeah, for me yeah. because what Hollywood wanted, what everyone liked and, and the, the martial arts, the fun, all oh, the kicky stuff. Oh, yeah, let's kick it off. And then he's just like, yeah, but that's not what it's for. Like, mm just take the fucking bottle off it's that it comes back to that that idea of oh yeah but there's all these moves hit them yeah was it there's that that saying isn't there um hit them first hit them hard and keep on hitting um and a lot of it comes down to that which is that the baseline really for for most martial arts is get them on the ground and make sure they don't run after you that's that's the kind of the, that's what all of us really want um yeah. from martial arts down to down to or up to depending on how you see it self-defense um it's that's that's the end of the day kind of thing um and it's it's weird because we've kind of looped around and not given an answer to this but it's actually quite good for a podcast sometimes to not know yeah. where the hell well, you're again, going i i don't i don't think there is a i personally don't see that there is one set answer that will cover yeah. every martial art for this no some some, some of them yeah. can be modernized and actually yeah. some can well. some can't some yeah. who cares yeah, so some of them actually, because of what they want to do or where they're being used, need to be modernised potentially um, continually. Sorry, it just came into my head. The Indian martial arts, Kele Paratu. Um, I know there's a P in it somewhere. I can never. <laughs> <laughs> some of them need to be um, updated almost continually to be effective for what they are because they are being used in a certain way an obvious one of this although it's not most traditional would be something like Krav Maga it needs to be updated continually because of its usage it, it's mm. it has to be at, at least in its in its true form um it, when it's used for for certain tactics it has to be updated it just has to be um because it's not an ancient one that we're coming back to but then you have something like Tai Chi which actually mm, the the ancient way of doing it is potentially what makes it the most one of the most popular martial arts in the world and makes it so good for everyone for their from for everything from back pain to mixing into your martial arts and having a better flow it's it it does depend you know it's modernization isn't necessarily for everyone um you know i mean the way I, the way i teach aikido is completely different to how my instructor does it because i've got a different background and I've nicked certain things from, for example, Tai Chi. So I, especially if I know a student of mine has done Tai Chi before, I go, oh, it's this movement from Tai Chi. And then suddenly, bing, they get it. Or I will use, um, I've taken push hands, sticky hands and stuff like that before as a training aid to get your people used to doing something completely different related to Aikido. Yeah. And I mean, so you because seen... it works better yeah. as a training aid and teaching aid to get the point across quicker. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, I'm thinking of, of of how I do it as well. I mean, you've been to you've been to one or two of my classes, but you've also been to other self defense people and all that. And I'm thinking specifically of maybe the style. The, yeah, my style of kicking is very different to how a lot of people would do it, especially oh, yeah. in my area, because generally in my area for self defense there is a general chambering. They don't they don't have the kind of flowing and sweep kick that i use <laughs> they don't you know that a sweeping upward kick isn't generally seen as a self-defense kick because mm. people don't do it properly but um but you know that so yeah there is there is something that i've kind of gone mm, actually let's tweak it a bit more now you know i i i interlace different parts of of um, different self-defense because obviously i've trained in more than one style of self-defense as well because self-defense isn't the end of the line either guys there are hundreds of types of different self-defense and you can got to remember some martial arts what, what we'll call martial arts don't consider themselves martial arts consider themselves defense and vice versa um and depending on which country you are it's easier to set different ones up depending on the country that you're in um mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you're in the UK, it's easier to set up a self-defense system. If you're in Germany, it's easier to set up a martial arts system. Um, now, I'm in a weird position because I'm an Englishman who is um, recognized 
to have a self-defense system through a German wing of a Japanese international body. So figure that one out. Um, <laughs> well, it's the European wing, but the European wing is in Germany. Um, so, um, so of course, the, the, there's different, different places consider themselves in different ways as well, so that they, they interact in different ways. Um, so modernization is inbuilt with some systems and it's completely not inbuilt with some other systems but then as we said earlier i think the of the the one that is the most funny is it man because it's it's both rebellious and modernized at the same time that it's traditional and lineage based and you're like that doesn't make sense the whole point it man made was was the similar point that bruce lee made even though bruce lee was a lot cockier and sure of himself than it man was i think um, <laughs> um he was he became very much americanized we'll blame it on them um but you know for, for it man he was he was the rebel he was a massive rebel for 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 that time period um and yet he's now seen as almost like he's one of the 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 great the grandfather of kung fu yeah and you're like yeah no really not like i can just imagine some of his te- some of it man's teachers looking and going what the fuck have you done um it's really weird so you've got some that have tried to modernize it? and immediately stunted hungar. yeah i mean was it was it I mean, was it hunger or a extreme, a extreme fists or something i think it was hunger i think it was hunger ones yeah yeah hunger guy. now you say it man and everyone goes i'll oh, bring chong and it's like Mm-mm. yeah but it it, it, but it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't isn't <laughs> well yeah it's yeah. well it's like a lot of things um and it's and actually if we look at um chinese although there is differences in how you see it kele paratu is potentially where shaolin kung fu comes from and yeah. so kung fu in shaolin form may be seen as a modernization of an older martial art well, again, that's but the again, other one I like is that people say that. Then there's also the other people who go, go down the it wasn't the fighting art that they Im- imported, as it were, and that they were given the um, the health benef- the health exercises from the original form of like what now people think of as yoga. It was just the poses and stances and training exercises from that, and they kind of then this is the whole thing. It's like which one was it? Was it the fighting art or was it the they developed and tweaked it? It's if you go and see. Fight. I mean, if you go and watch some of the Kelly Parati, the way they move, you just kind of go, yeah, no, that that's early Kung Fu. Um, well, again, you look at most Asian martial arts, you look at it, it all goes back to that because it all in some way, shape or form goes back to bloody China. <laughs> or, 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 or via India. the Shaolin Temple <laughs> or India, yeah. No, no, it goes back through China to India. Um, yeah, I mean, usually we're, we're, via the Shaolin Temple in some way, shape or form. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, can, at, um, can they Parati six chin now? <laughs> Five I mean, six chin nut of, of uh, yeah. Shaolin. You'll find yeah. jujitsu techniques in there. Yeah, it's it all. I think the first two are aikido techniques with a punch. <laughs> I'm I'm actually trying to think of, and I think there is only one, but that even that's been modernised. But I'm trying to think, and I'm depending on how you look at it, every single martial art at some point in history was modernised to be a more effective martial art and more effective fighting style. Every yeah. single one of them except for the potential exception, although it's not really an exception because it's been modernized. When I say it's been modernized, they've taken out the bits that kill you, um, pancreation. Um, because pancreation, it actually, the, the, if you look at the styles and you literally go into the textbooks, you have to really, you know, it's mm-hmm. old. Um, or their, their version of modernization is going, well, yeah, but we can't do that to people anymore. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> they've almost gone the other way. of like, no, 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 we don't want it as effective anymore. Um, but it is weird. I mean, Kelly Parato is insane. Have you ever seen any of their fighting? I've seen some of the videos. The best one is when they do sword fighting because they don't... So Kelly Parato still has hand-to-hand fighting, but their sword fighting was basically lost. It's, it's, they still have versions of it, but a lot of it was lost. Mm. So they have choreographed fights, and then they just go, ah, freestyle, where they just hit each other with swords <laughs> and shields. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? um but yeah it's it's so pretty much every martial art has is a modernization i mean my actually what no, what i came into the podcast say saying which was i come from a very traditional japanese judo background is an offshoot of jujitsu 
it in itself is a modernization of another martial art. It is a newer version. There was a modernization of, of another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, they're, they're all modernizations. And even look at, um, fencing, I fencing is a great example. If, even as a stage combat performer and stuff like that, you look at stuff that's in stage combat and then you look at it as a, you go back and look at the manuals and fencing manuals and you look at them and you go, Oh no. Yeah. These are actually real moves that have been just made safer for, film and screen and theater and stuff but these are still you know have a point of where you're hitting the person with a pointy stick um but you look at the styles of that and you go back through the manuals because every every different change to how a sword was made and the types and styles of sword affected how you used a sword the best one so is it's, it's all been modernized entirely yeah it's a, it's if you look at the victorian era then queensbury rules boxing was massively developed out of sword play Basically, how you used your sword was almost the same way as how you punched someone, um, which is why Bartitsu looks the way it does, because Bartitsu incorporated um, sword fighting, grappling. Uh, I mean, it was, was it cloak? I mean, it is if you if you ever want the um, if you ever if anyone ever wants to go really deep into this can go any direction on a martial art despite the fact that it was in its truest form very short-lived, but still exists, um, then look at Bartitsu, which is an English martial art that comes from everywhere because it is a mix of about seven different countries' martial arts. Um, they, they developed it further when it came into England by telling his instructors to go across the country and fight people. Um, it then helped the suffragette feminist movement by being the catalyst to the suffragitsu, um martial, Which martial was also they also had the um oh what was her name the woman who trained in japan and did jujitsu and came back and taught in you i can't forget what her name was uh, i can't forget yeah she it was a ridiculously rare example again of mm. a a foreigner and b a foreign woman <laughs> being allowed to learn jujitsu yeah in japan and then coming back to the uk with it and going oh by the way here's this and yeah. so it was, it was, that was, that was, that's actually the only, mar that's one of the very few martial arts that called itself a martial art that I can think of, because Kraft doesn't call itself a martial art. It's one of the few martial arts that I can think of that called itself a martial art, but consistently updated itself like a self-defense system. Because it would go, no, we have a martial system. Oh, that works better. We'll change it. Now we have a different martial system. Yeah. You know, it would add stuff. It would add vignette in. It would add all sorts, you know, catch wrestling in with it. And because they used to go up, because this is the day of um, carnival wrestling. And they'd be like, all right, we've got some guys. Go fight the carnival wrestler. Okay. Um, you know, this is in a, a backstreet Soho dojo that's now a Chinese, Chinese restaurant, I think. Um, it was, you know, this is Soho London in Victorian era. Um, it's, it, but it is one of the funniest ones because it is... Uh, it is both incredibly traditional because of where it got its stuff, incredibly modern because of how it developed itself. Um, effectively, the first mixed martial arts system that I can think of, um, even though, you know, you'll never get anyone in the UFC to ever admit it. Although I pray for the day that we get an, um, a Bartitsuka in the UFC. It, it would just be so funny. I really want to see a you know a full-on bruiser boxer come up against a bartitsuka and he takes on um pugilistic stance <laughs> just to see the everyone in the stadium going what the fuck wow. is he doing <laughs> is this a joke what's what's going on and then just pile on the guy um i mean it's even got like um uh, savart and things yeah. in it you know their kicks are, are from savart which is weird because it's it, again it's very very modernized because Savat is certainly not that old, um, but it's got like jujitsu in it, which is incredibly old in in Japan. It's got that tradition, but then it's got Savat because actually it thought the kicks were better from there. It's a weird one. Bartitsu is a weird one. Um, anyone that oh, yeah. hasn't Definitely. seen these podcasts before, um, I used to be a Bartitsu instructor back in the day. That's why I pick it up. It's fun. It's the only martial art I know of where you hit someone with a mountain bike. Um, love that. I love that literally written into the syllabus like not even an adaption literally isn't it, written into the isn't syllabus. there a version of it of the penny farthing version as well i remember reading somewhere potentially <laughs> because someone with was, a penny yeah. farthing <laughs> potentially i love the idea there's literally just one bit where they're both in very kind of the bowler hat full yep. and they just bang 
the fuck? <laughs> it's when everyone goes, oh, well, it's a gentleman's martial art. Really? No. Really? <laughs> Are you sure about that? That's the least gentlemanly thing I can think of. I mean, it's because of how it was written. It's Victorian England. The way they dressed was very, you know, that's why a lot of steampunk guys do it, because it's, it's, it, they, they like the version of it with steampunk. Um, but then you get, then you realise, oh no, this is the time of Jack the Ripper. This is the time of, like, it, but it was written a you certain way. You will be mugged way, and so you, killed or yeah. just walking down the street at night too late. You, yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the, the the great way is when you read the syllabus and you read the sections, and one of them is literally titled "How to Escort a Ruffian from a Bar," and it's like, ah, that's why they think it's a gentleman's martial art. Um, but it's, it's I mean, that's yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah. So the, there are martial arts like that one, although that that pretty much died out in 1902. There are suggestions that he rewrote it, and it survived in certain forms until 1906 and then was redeveloped by Tony Wolf in America in the late 80s to 90s and then has been brought back to the UK by various people but um, that is a version of one that was both traditional and modern almost in even parts because as I remember as I remember from some of the the writing from the time um, it was very traditionally taught in its individual parts it, because it was both integrated and not integrated. So for certain parts, you would be in a gi. For certain parts, you wouldn't. It was, it was taught in, in kind of a stunted way. Although they tried to mix it together, there were still separate sections to it. So it, it did have that. So is that what would happen if we tried to modernise all martial arts? Would they end up in that kind of stunted, well, they kind of flow, but mm, that's not quite right. It's, it's weird to think. Yeah, but, it's, I mean, you do get... Like even with like you know not modern but you know like arts that we have that are hundreds of years old and we carried on now but if you look at um again i'm going to use aikido as the obvious example because it's what i teach and it's the easiest one to jump to um so many people in the world say aikido has no form of competition to mickey aikido with the heretics a lot and we go yeah sort that uh because again judo guy was the guy who formed the syllabus a bit mm. of sport so he knew how the bloody brain works and remembered stuff so it has a syllabus but if you look at the way that the competitions themselves are lined up you have like randori tanto randori where it's you know just a variant of like point scoring with a baton and then you have just free like free randori and shiai which is basically no okay no tori you're just trying to throw the other person and it looks like judo yeah because it becomes it basically almost looks the same as olympic judo to a degree because it becomes more of a scrap but then you look at the other side of the competitions and you have the forms competitions where you're scored on things like, you know, on how well the technique is presented, how well, you know, on the look and the feel of the, you know, it goes almost like it's a bit almost more rhythm, rhythm gymnastics. You've got even a 10 point score kind of thing for how well you did and, and how well you, yeah, how did you finish on the buzzer before the buzzer? Like if you look up um, uh, Mick Pratt is a, I think he's a former coach for the, um, British team there are videos of him competing in places and he does a kata and finishes the second his hand comes up to show that he's finished the technique the buzzer goes <laughs> bang on time he just goes beep and it's done and he's like you know there was, you can literally freeze frame it midway through some of his techniques and draw a straight line from his foot to his head because his posture is just like on point and stuff and it's like so you get stylized points for how it looks as a kata and stuff so it kind of you do get that with where they kind of have modernized a bit for that yeah just go and have a muck around and fight and yeah have a, but not a complete i'm gonna go and pummel you on the street sort of thing actually I've, I've, I've just thought of again because you're saying about um because that's change interchanging almost with the with different different stuff and changing it to be yeah, more one yeah the, the fun one for for me that has just occurred to me is a martial art we talked about earlier but that is modern that has actually gone backwards to be more modern and be more effective which is carlson gracie brazilian jiu-jitsu and i know that there's some people from other brazilian jiu-jitsu are not going to like me for that because carlson gracie isn't exactly part of the um gracie heritage anymore um but carlson gracie effectively f fell out with the rest of the gracie lineage because he wanted to start from the from standing far more he didn't want to just be okay, it's not all on the ground, but let's be honest, guys, you spend 90% of the ground because of that continual thing of, 
oh, all fights end up on the ground. Not if I stay upright, and if you're on the ground, I'm going to stamp on you. Anyway, um, the, the point that Carson Gracie made was, yes, but I want to be the one that puts them on the ground. And so actually what Carlson Gracie did was almost move back into the origin, which is Japanese jiu-jitsu, yeah. which has the stuff that judo kept, which is the throws. And so they, they started to move in more of the throws, which is actually, he's modernized it to be more effect. He's modernized a martial art that has seen, was seen to be a modernized, more effective version of an older system. And the way he's modernized it is by going back to the system that supposedly wasn't modern enough. So <laughs> it's, it, it does have that, that really weird thing. That, like you say, sometimes for a lot of these, you have to look into the past. Carlson Gracie um, Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is certainly one of those that I can think of where, and I'm sure there's a load of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu folks that would disagree with me out there, but you know, read a book. Um, <laughs> it's the truth. Um, it's, you know, it, it's effectively what he's done is, is moved backwards and it's, it's just, it's thrown him out of kilter with the rest of the BJJ guys, his own family. Um, you know, I mean, his own family stuff is diluted as hell because you now have people that have married, a uh, one of the daughters and then divorced and married someone else and calls himself a Gracie. Oh, no, you're not. Um, <laughs> Not proper lineage at all. Um, people marry. There's, even, there's even people saying that the lineage of the Graces themselves is questionable, isn't there? There's um, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Superfoot. Can't remember. What, what, oh, um, uh, oh God, Bill, Bill, Bill Superfoot. Superfoot. Wallace. Wallace, Wallace. That's it. Wallace. Yeah, Wallace. Yeah. Bill Wallace. There was, yeah. I saw a video of him where he basically was saying that um, he was calling to question their line their legitimacy as a uh, coming from. Jiu Jitsu and sort of and saying that they really don't have any solid provable. Again, I don't know because I haven't looked into it because I don't care. <laughs> it's not my, it's not what I do. I, I, Bill, I don't Bill need to Super know. Fit, Bill, Bill Superfoot uh, uh, Wallace has oh. far more legitimacy than either of us to go after the Gracies. Oh, um. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, but he, there was a video. I can't remember who, who he was on. It was on YouTube somewhere. I was watching it and he was saying on this video, he was questioning their legitimacy is jujitsu because i think he said that they trained under a judo guy and then went to something and then he was calling questions saying uh, can they really prove that their their lineage through jujitsu as well so it should and be brazilian sort of judo <laughs> yeah I, again i'm just this is like i've watched that and i've watched about 10 minutes of a, a few minutes of the video and i kind of oh, yeah, cool and then fell asleep or whatever and, or, what, or clicked on something else um, but I was like, okay, that's interesting. That the fact that everyone's heralding these guys as being, oh, yeah, this is the, the perfect thing, and you know, going back to that, and then you've got people like him coming out and going, yeah, but are they actually legit, and have they actually trained with the people they've said they trained? I mean, that's a weird one because that's almost like I would say, he's, he's not, he's not suggesting. I can... For the sounds of it, he's not suggesting they're charlatans. He's just suggesting that they actually learned something else. Yeah, judo, I, again, I, which is, I, I mean, judo is a, deri is, is a derivative, it's a derivative of, Jap of, of Japanese yeah. jiu-jitsu. So it's, there's some there's some lineage. It's, it's just there. the wrong way round. Um, yeah, I, but again, I didn't watch the whole thing. But yeah, it's just it's, it's, he, it's, the title was him calling question on did they have a legit background in X? Kind of anyone thing, that's so um, like, anyone that's wondering, by the way, um, of who he is, go and Google Bill Superfoot uh, Wallace. He is not a hack. He is not some random martial artist. I know uh, this guy is a very, very well respected and has the the medals and trophies to back up what he knows. Um, it would be interesting because I mean, there's no denying I'm, that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is effective. I'm to look up the link and send it to you because I yeah, 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 give it a go. Honestly, I didn't watch the whole thing, but that might just, be an interesting just, podcast in the future. Yeah. Just see how hasted yeah. I can get in the BJJ community. Um, <laughs> I mean, th there's no denying that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is effective in, in, in whatever way. I mean, it, it definitely is. But it'd be interesting to see if it's become effective by taking a, um, a lineage that isn't true. That's, it, it's a weird one because they're not... even if they, it, Because if it turned out that actually, no, they learned Judo, it's not that they're charlatans because they really do yeah, they know do their know stuff. Their shit. <laughs> and they've gone via Judo, which is... You know, it's it's the it's the right route. Yeah. It's just that they've they've called it the wrong thing. <laughs> it's almost yeah. I, again, it's weird. I, again it's weird. don't quote me one hundred percent. No, 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 no. What it was because it was just, this is well over God knows how long ago I watched this yeah. video. Um, probably about a year ago or something. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, just just that that title came up on the 
suggested panel on the side of YouTube. And I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> so I clicked on it for a bit and then was like, okay, he's got part way through the interview. Hmm. He was talking about it and then he kind of clicked off and something else that caught my eye. Yeah. Um, but it just, yeah, it just, it just made me think and go, well, if he's going, are they who they say they are? Superfoot is, um, is interesting. If anyone ever wants um, a fun one where you can watch both him kicking the hell out of someone and then him just mucking about, Bill Superfoot is one of those guys. Um, he will, you know, he's, he's the kind of person like that. They always, you always see those um, videos where it's the old um, guy with the long beard and the long hair doing those kind of things. Bill Superfoot can do the same thing. I mean, God knows how old the man is now. He looks far older than I think he actually is. Um, but, but he's also, a, <laughs> he's, he's also a, a former tournament champion several, several times. Um, you know, there's, he's... he's still bloody quick as well. <laughs> you, huh? He's still old, God, yeah. Still yeah, bloody quick. Yeah, he's not someone that you could... Yeah, this brings me back to my ideas on blocking. Block Bill Superfoot. Just I don't, want for it. I don't care how I don't care how big you are. <laughs> You think you can block a decent kick? Try and block Bill Superfoot Wallace when he's actually trying to kick you. You will not know what hit you until two hours later when you wake up. Um, and he, trust me, he's older than you by some way. Um, so, but um, I think we'll um, close yes. out there because, as always, we've kind of gone on, we've waffled, but we have kind of kind of answered the do. question, which is, it depends. <laughs> is, is our conclusion. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. it depends. Um, <laughs> And seeing on the, I mean, seeing on the fence isn't always the worst idea. Um, it, like you say, it depends on why do you want it, what are you doing it for, and so many other things. So, uh, you know, do you want it for health? Do you want it for because um, uh, you're you're in an area that where you think you might need to be able to protect yourself? Um, are you in America? Get a gun. You know, I mean, it's. Or don't. <laughs> or don't i mean i'm in a weird position because i'm I, I i believe in gun control but i also i used i used to shoot so um i'm, I'm from the country then. i'm from the countryside you see um <laughs> I, I used to do uh, small ball competitions so <laughs> yeah i, well, I used to do um <laughs> yeah i used to do rifle shooting i found out that to, um so sadly that my old shooting range from when i was younger is now a, a hipster coffee bar which oh, pains no. me. it pains me so much a nice quaint little village in west sussex uh painful um but yeah so it, it literally does depend guys um know what you're looking for first i've put this in in things in, in like posts and instagram stuff before um once you know what you're looking for then you can kind of see whether you want to go for the guy that's been modernized or a version of that um, or you will know whether you want to be more traditional. If you know you're looking for a more spiritualized and cultural version, I think we can both agree you don't go for the modernized, um, no. or even for the modern martial arts because that's just not what they are. Um, if anyone's looking for a uh, you know a kind of culturally um, representative and spiritual path as well as being able to defend themselves, then you, you don't want to come to me i'm i'm not that person um I, it's never going to be me even when i was teaching martial arts more than self-defense bartitsu does not have that um so it's it's not even the martial arts side of me um in teaching terms it was never me so you wouldn't come to someone like me you wouldn't really i don't think go to tom that much either because it's not it's not how you teach it you would however potentially go to my old sensei um roger payne down in in mid sussex you might go up to um it, uh, oh god what's it called there's one in gillingham and i cannot remember the name of it but there's a place in gillingham you might go up to as well there's um you know and there's a load of them in london a load of very good ones in london in the right parts of london but there's a load of decent ones up there so if you're looking for that that's where you'd go um and if you're looking for the more adaptive ones then there's a load of them as well you just need to kind of know what you're looking for or maybe take a yeah. couple of classes in each have a look around see what you want and decide try before you buy. yeah try before you buy definitely and if they won't let you try then don't buy so <laughs> okay um so we'll call it a, a day there again guys um i hope no one was offended or upset by anything there again they are only the opinions of me and tom individually at this point in time we may um both change our minds tomorrow morning after some sleep as well so um we hope you aren't offended and um hopefully you've enjoyed uh, listening to us there uh, next week hopefully if all goes well it will be a 
film review of, um, as I mentioned uh, a few times already, of Scott Adkins um, and Debt Collector. Uh, so that's going to be a film review by myself and the rest of the uh, committee for the Self-Defence and Wellbeing Society for next year. So Lauren Massa, Ben Reeves, uh, Sam Obard and myself will be doing a film review of that. So a bit more of a general chat <laughs> and uh, uh, potentially taking the piss. Um, maybe not too much, just in case I ever ha um, want to ask uh, Scott to come and help out at a class um, <laughs> if we find ourselves that flush. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this week and I hope you enjoy next time. Cheers, guys. Thanks. <laughs>